Hello everyone, my name is Francesca, I am an Italian knitter and this is episode number 10 of an Italian knitting podcast. It, it feels pretty exciting because of the actual like round double digits number. So um, yeah, I don't know, that's it, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Today we have a little bit of a kind of random mix of things in addition to the regular agenda of a knitting podcast. So I'll mention one thing at the beginning and then we'll go through finished objects, in progress stuff, um, and then you'll get some like other random updates from me at the end so that you can skip those if you'd like to do so. So the first order of business is that I am hosting a knit along together with Icy from Orsa Knits. Ooh, I feel like a very accomplished knitter, YouTuber. <laughs> We're gonna call it the Le Knit Along. We're gonna knit patterns from the designer Le Knit. <laughs> Not 100% sure on the pronunciation. I contacted the designer, um, but I don't know the official answer. But she's Le Knit Home or Le Knit, and her designs are stunning. Um, I'll kind of sprinkle some photos here and there to convince you that this is a knit along that you want to join. But the favorite pattern that me and Icy have in our hearts, like our dream project to knit, is the peacock tee, which is like a super pretty, simple looking. We'll see how simple it is actually to knit. But it is a simple looking um, lace yoke and me and Icy actually connected over this pattern because she was like oh I'd like to knit this and I'm like oh I'd like to knit this too and the idea of having possibly other knitters join us kind of sparked from there so the knit along would start from the beginning of July up until end of September so if you feel like knitting some summer shirts or any of the patterns from this designer, you know that you have other people knitting alongside you. I'll definitely knit the peacock tee and I feel like I should not say because then <laughs> what if I don't keep my word? But like there are a few other patterns that I'd like to knit within this three months period. Um, but also there are quite a few children's knits like shirts and sweaters which I would like to tackle and my daughter would be very happy. She has a birthday in July so I feel like knitting something for her and giving it as a late birthday gift might be a good idea because I might not be quick enough in time for her birthday, we'll see. If you want more updates and information about this knit along. I'll put what I can here in the description box and I'll keep that description box updated as soon as we have, I don't know, like additional information. But if you are on Instagram, you can follow me or I see, I guess me and or I see maybe both of us. You can also just follow her if she's more fun than me. I'm joking, I won't be offended. But anyway, we'll be posting on Instagram updates and maybe we'll be resharing your pictures if you use the hashtag LeNitalong. Um, then we can kind of find your projects. You can also tag us. We'll hopefully, most likely, have prizes at the end. That's it. Actually not. Um, if you're based in Italy, uh, we actually have a store, an online store, that is offering a discount and that's strict.it, strict.it, I'm sorry, and they are offering 15% discount um, on the Sunnest Garn Line yarn, which is called for in a lot of Linnit patterns, and I am going to order my yarn right after this video is done. I think I'll go for the blue yarn for the peacock tee, which is exactly what's pictured in the official pattern pictures. I feel like as soon as I see official pictures of any pattern, 
that's the yarn and the color that I actually want in my heart. So this time around, I'll be actually doing that and choosing the official blue Sanna's Garlina colorway. If you want to join me, please do so. Stricca.it currently ships only to Italy. I'm sorry if you're not in Italy, but hopefully you can either find the Sanna's Garlina yarn, official yarn in your country. Um, or you can also substitute it with something else, which is totally fine. You can still be part of the knit along if you knit with uh, a different yarn. That's it for now. Again, all the information that I have are in the description box below. If you want to participate, just let me know in the comments if you'd like, or just message me on Instagram and we can chat about it a little bit. Okay, I feel like we should start the actual podcast content. I have um, a couple of finished objects and two in progress things and a little bit of acquisitions. It's empty ish. Not like last time. Wink, wink. The first finished object. I'm already wearing. This is camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear and this is knitted in that not recommended by me yarn that I talked about over the last couple of episodes. This is made for crocheting and not intended for knitting. It's very thin. It's a pretty sturdy thread but it doesn't really caress your fingers. It's not super pleasant to knit with, but I feel like I was successful in making a garment out of it. So I'm giving myself a pat on my back. I've had the camisole number four on my to knit list for a while. So I'm happy that I kind of tried my hand at knitting it. I actually, uh, wasn't able to achieve the correct gauge for this pattern. I had a much tighter gauge just because the yarn is was so weird and so thin and the yarn wasn't like plump or anything like that. It was very thread-like and so my gauge was tighter so I chose to knit a larger size than what I would ideally choose and that combined with the kind of tighter gauge gave me my I guess ideal size. So um, I actually knitted size large uh, when I would usually go for extra small or small. And the construction here is done from the top. It is two triangles and you knit similar ones at the back, but they're like a little bit smaller. And then you continue down in the round forever, which is my favorite. <laughs> Think in the world and the pattern I would maybe call it like a broken rib I don't know if this is technically broken rib but um, it is some sort of ribbing let's say that and the bind off is the one that the pattern called for so it's a regular bind off in pattern so you knit knit purl purl knit knit purl purl while binding off and I feel like you can actually tell that there's a weird uh, band here at the bottom. So what happened is I blocked the entire garment up until here. And because I put the stitches on hold, I blocked it and I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of length. And so I did that and bind off, but this fin final piece here is not blocked. And I feel like you can somewhat tell that blocking actually works <laughs> in evening out the fabric. So yeah, I mean, eventually I'll block everything once I wash it again in a few days, maybe, and it'll be more even, but yeah. I don't know if I have lots more to say about this pattern, actually. Um, I do want to knit another one and I have some yarn already kind of set aside for this pattern. Hopefully I'll be able to get the regular gauge and knit kind of my regular size instead of kind of playing with fire. 
so I guess it means that I did enjoy the construction and knitting experience so I think this is a win for me I was not really expecting anything good to come out of this yarn so I'm very pleasantly surprised by the result I guess I don't know the teaching here is that even if you have some yarn that you're not super thrilled about if you still want to work with it because you paid money for it um, go for it. it it might actually work out into something that you actually enjoy wearing so I don't know my thought process here was just I'll knit a little bit and then if I don't like the fabric or I don't know the look of the thing I will just scrap it and get rid of it or donate it but yeah up until like kind of the I don't know a few centimeters um, I feel like I was liking the results so I went uh, up until the bind off and I actually do enjoy the result anything else I think the total price for this camisole was more or less nine euros I used three balls of fingering yarn I think they were like three euros each I'm gonna say maybe like let's say ten euros so I think it's affordable for me for my standards um, this is like a good price I will not be buying this yarn again though <laughs> so cool I'm gonna change into the second finished object so please close your eyes It is so hot today. So this is finished object number two. This is the Leafinity top that I've been kind of thinking about for a while. Uh, you might have seen this before as an in-progress garment. So finally, this is done. This is knitted bottom up and you then go and do your triangles at the top and the straps. So it's exactly the opposite as the camisole number four that I just showed that was top down uh, and bottom up like this is not my favorite construction. I feel like it's so difficult to try it on and get a proper decision around the fact that is this long enough or not for my body? Does it fit me well or not? Because you're just kind of holding a tube of fabric here at your armpits and just pretending that you know where the underarms would go so we just it is just awkward to try it on anyway i did follow the pattern so i did go bottom up and interesting things where the pattern asks for three to four repeats before you start doing the triangles so one of these shapes is a repeat so the pattern was going to be calling for three, like this, or four. And I did four, and then I did try the tube on, and it felt a little bit too short. That said, I wasn't super convinced, so I went on Ravelry, did a little bit of research, and tried to see if some people did more than four repeats for their body. And there was only one project that mentioned five repeats. And so in the end, they were also saying like, yeah, I did five, but I feel like it looks better tucked into shorts. So you could go away with four repeats. So I'm like, damn it. <laughs> um, because in my heart, I knew that four repeats weren't enough. I do like my full length garments. So I don't know, I just followed my heart and went for five repeats. I finished up the triangles and I blocked it. And when I tried it on, it was a little bit too long. Dun, 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 dun. I guess I couldn't really blame anyone but me because the pattern did say three to four repeats and I did five. <laughs> I went against the rules, such a rebel. And so what I decided to do was not to unravel the triangles and undo one of the repeats from the top here, which would be kind of your regular way to undo some of this castle, because those triangles actually were quite mentally time consuming. So I didn't want to unravel this because you have 
decreases and shaking and things like that. So it's like, so I had the idea of unraveling from the bottom. So this was the cast on edge. So I actually unraveled a little bit from the cast on edge. So it wasn't super complicated. It's still a knitted fabric. So the yarn is kind of twisted on itself to create the fabric. So you can still unravel from the cast on edge. It's just that it's not as easy as unraveling from the cast off edge. But it still can be done, especially if you're working in stocking stitch, that's super, not super easy, but like that's easy enough. Um, I was working with lace, so I just took my time, but I was able to unravel and I decided to unravel half of a repeat. So in the end, I do have four, one, two, three, four and a half. I don't know if you can actually tell, <laughs> but I think it works well for my body, for my height. And since I was at it, um, anyway, I had to redo a bottom edge. I decided to go for an I-cord bind off. I had done this in my Cumulus T uh, a few days before, and so I did like the look of it. And I just replicated the bind off, the same bind off for this shirt as well. And I do like it's straight. It doesn't roll or anything like that. And so, recommended. The original cast on edge was rolling a little bit. So in the end, I was happy that I had to undo the bottom part so that I could put in my favorite or I guess my preferred at the time bottom edge. Another thing I would mention is that the pattern doesn't recommend any specific ease. So there's no guidance in terms of, oh, pick the size um, that would give you five centimeter ease. There's nothing along these lines. And I did also contact the designer asking for advice. And they were like, you do you, you pick the ease that you want. Negative ease, no ease, positive ease whatever you decide. And I'm like, no, tell me. But in the end, the garment that I'm wearing has, I think, a couple of centimeter of negative ease. So it actually kind of stretches on my body slightly. It's not loose. It's still comfortable, but it does stretches across my chest quite nicely without bagginess. So if you are knitting this pattern, I would recommend going for negative ease to no ease more than going oversized because I feel like that would be a little bit like too bulky, especially because this yarn is actually a Aran worsted, heavy worsted Aran type of yarn. For mine, I use Drops Muscat in the color eight. I think this is an off-white and it is a pretty hefty kind of solid yarn. Um, it's not like a fingering so I feel like going very oversized with this would make it even heavier. So I guess that, that's my suggestion. In the first try that I did for this garment I actually went uh, with a few centimeters of positive ease, well, when I tried it on, it felt a bit too much. So I frogged and reverted back to a little bit of a negative ease, like a couple of centimeters of negative ease. And I think I would make the same choice again. I don't think I would knit this pattern again, though, in the near future, at least, because it was a lot of mental effort for me. I tend to go, as you know, or as you'll see from my works in progress, I do not have lots of mental space for complicated patterns. And this is an all over lace pattern. It was a project that I kept for the times where I could have my chart there, looking at it, no distractions, no daughter running around, no like TV knitting. This doesn't feel like a TV knitting for me because you need to kind of pay attention at what row you're on, where the yarn overs, where the 
knit two together and things like that. Um, so I think it looks very pretty and I'm happy I have it. But I don't think I would do it again. Is it true? Sorry, let me say again. I don't think I would knit a second one. I think one is good enough in my wardrobe and I like that I picked the white. I think it goes well with like a little bit of a tan, uh, especially if you don't tan like me with like a, a shirt, like a t-shirt. I would recommend that. <laughs> There's also a different version of this pattern, uh, which it's called the leaf top. And that is knitted flat and has a very pretty button band in the middle. And I did like the look of the buttons, but I couldn't be bothered to knit flat. I much prefer knitting in the round like this is. And I also tried inserting a fake button band in this lace pattern, but it was even more mental effort. So um, no, 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 no. I just want to knit in the round and the lace was really enough to keep me invested and entertained even more than enough. Yeah, that's it. I'm interested to see if I'll get a lot of wear out of this because this is a tank, is it called like a tank top? Uh, but it's in a um, heavier weight, even though it's cotton, it's still quite like hefty. So I'm interested to see if I'll still get used out of this. Maybe in the, in the evenings, maybe not in the kind of super hot afternoons, but maybe like later in the evening, this could be like a good compromise. Like you still get like your breathability in the armpit area, but you're kind of more like protected and cozier in, in your chest and bust area and belly area, which is quite important to me. And now we're going to move forward to works in progress. And they are two, but they are the same. <laughs> am I so boring? I think I am a bit boring, but I'm going to show you anyway. So both patterns are the Cumulus T by Petit Knit, and they're both knitted in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. So this is the first one. We have the sleeves done, short sleeves, so pretty kind of fast. The collar, I haven't finished it up, but there will be a nice I-cord edge all around, and then we'll also knit the body. The other cumulus tee is a little bit behind compared to the one that I just showed you. So we don't have sleeves yet, we don't have a collar, and we have a little bit of a body. And for both of them, I'm using Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. I don't think this is very interesting to you, but I had it there, so I had to show you. Uh, but this is Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. How many times did I just say that? Two different colors. The gray is putty, putty, putty. And this is the actual original colorway that it's in the official pattern pictures. So I felt it was kind of like a timeless, versatile color. Well, the kind of plum color is plum rose. Or is it rose plum? Plum rose. I should not have doubted myself. I actually, if you remember, I already knit one cumulus tee, which I have here. And so this is kind of how the final results will be. So a very simple v-neck shirt. I will not make like modifications in length or anything like that because it fits beautifully, I think. And so I'm just going with it. And the gray one actually came with me to my knitting retreat as a project that was just easy to knit in the round. And I'll talk about my knitting retreat later in the video if you'd like some information about that. The pure silk is pretty nice. <laughs> A very generic information, yes, but that's what it is. And it is my first time knitting with silk. Also, I don't have silk garments, even store-bought. I never kind of felt interested in this fiber, I guess. 
so I think it'll be kind of nice for the summer. It feels quite cool, so I think it might go well for summer nights, even spring and autumn, I feel like, or I guess even in the winter underneath a cardigan, why not? Just as a regular shirt. It is thin enough because this is a fingering, light fingering weight yarn actually, so it's not bulky at all, so you can probably layer it up layer it you can probably use it for layering so it has a base layer and then a cardigan on top nice i'm not sure about this color um i don't ever go for rosy violet purple plum color i don't know i do like the gray one though oh, so boring but so good looking You'll hopefully see both of this done during next episode. They will look probably the same. Again, I don't play with the croppedness of my garments. I tend to just make them long enough to fit easily, be tucked into my pants. I'll probably knit the same length for both of them, so they probably look exactly the same other than the color. I'm not mad about it. I quite like that. I'm actually one of those people who buy the same shirt in different colors or the same pants in different colors uh, if I go to the store. So I guess that could be applied to knitting too. So that's not surprising in the slightest. I'll give you a little bit of uh, acquisition overview if you'd like uh, before talking about the knitting retreat and another thing that I'd like to mention. This is officially the basket of acquisitions and it is fairly empty but it's also a fairly big basket so the fact that it's fairly empty doesn't mean much. There are still um, eight balls of yarn so all knitting for Olive. This is an order that I've done from their official website. Actually this is all knitting for Olive and all pure silk. It's so the same yarn that the Cumulus Tees in progress. So this is a very pretty peach color, soft peach it's called, so I was right. And this is the amount needed for another Cumulus Tee if I want to, or another summer shirt, maybe a different pattern, I should do that. But this is good yardage and so even like a simple raglan shirt for the summer would work. I'm excited. I don't know if this color is good for me, but we're gonna, we're gonna use it anyway. And then I have two different camisole quantities. They're not gonna be used together. I don't know why I'm showing them together. I guess it's good to compare colors. This is the famous, that's the artichoke. This is the colorway that you see in the official pictures for the camisole number four. And so I think I will knit a camisole number four in this color so that I can have the prettiest camisole number four. And the last camisole quantity is in powder. So this is kind of a dusty gray cream, not cream, dusty gray, dusty taupe. I don't know, but this is the color. And I think I might finally make the Maya summer top, which is a pretty lace camisole, which I've tried swatching for a few weeks, months ago. But the yarn I was using, the crochet appropriate yarn I was using, didn't play well with the pattern. So I might try again finally with uh, the, the appropriate yarn. This is much smoother and softer on my fingers and less slippery, so this might work out for me. Um, if the Maya summer top doesn't work out, this could be used for any other lightweight camisole. Maybe not another camisole number four, or maybe yes, we'll see. Cool, we're finally done with actual yarn and we're gonna now if you want to stick around talk about my knitting retreat so i went 
to said Nedim retreat a couple of weeks ago. It was wonderful. The weather was perfect. The company, the people were so lovely. I have some footage for you so you can actually see how beautiful the landscape was. And we had a lovely hike in the woods. We had alcohol sipping experiences and knitting in the garden, but also inside the hotel in the evenings. Lovely hotel rooms. I don't know. I cannot say enough good things about it. And this was hosted by Giulia from Wool Done, which I will link below if you are in Italy and you're looking for knitting retreats or just knitting events in general. She hosts a good amount of them throughout the year. So definitely recommend it. And I'll insert said footage that I mentioned before at the end of this video um, so that you can kind of get a taste of what we did. We did some knitting and walking at the same time, so we're proper knitters. The last thing I wanted to mention before saying goodbye is that I will be teaching at a knitting conference in Italy in the fall. It's called Knit Italy. This is like a proper knitting conference, probably kind of the main one in Italy. Is it true? Is it not true? I don't know. I've been back in Italy for just a year and so I've not been in touch as much with the Italian knitting community, but I feel like this is a, one of the proper knitting conferences in Italy and it will be in the fall and I will be teaching a very small class and it will be about reading the patterns that are written in English. Um, I feel like I have a good amount of experience <laughs> with that because the vast majority of patterns that I knit from are in English. I feel like if you follow this channel, you might not need a class on how to read English patterns, but if you are based in Italy and you're just interested in a knitting event, please come join us there and I'll leave all the information below even if you don't come to my class which is totally fair maybe come and say hello to me or other people there like just do your thing do whatever you want to do but just know that there is this conference and I'll probably mention it again closer to the time where the conference actually happens and I hope to get some footage while there too, so that I can insert it into one of my podcast episodes. Um, that's it. So I remind you that we do have this Lenit along for the next three months. So if you want to knit one of the patterns from Lene Holmes or Lenit, uh, please join us. We're gonna start, or I'm gonna start, I guess, with the peacock tea. I'm gonna order the yarn today and hopefully knit it within the next few weeks and I'll report back during my next episode and also on Instagram I'll kind of track my progresses with that tea and now I'm gonna just leave you with some footage from the knitting retreat. Bye friends! <laughs>